When it comes to detection, what data sources really matter the most? If you've asked that question, this video is for you. So based on where we're at today in 2021, we have tools like say MITRE Attack Enterprise, Navigator, and there's another tool that's maybe not as commonly known called MITRE Detect. Now, MITRE Detect is not officially a MITRE sponsored tool, but it is extremely helpful. Because what we can use it for is take things like this MITRE Enterprise Matrix, and we can start to build out a data visibility or detection map of what data sources you have in your environment. More specifically, one of the things I find it to be very helpful with is communicating why certain data sources matter. So let's say you have something like a SIM. You're trying to bring in data sources. You're, you're trying to map that out and you're trying to discuss among the team, hey, here's why we need EDR or Sysmon or Windows OS logs versus Linux in. But what exactly does that give you? And how do you get others who disagree with you to maybe understand the importance of why you're pushing so hard. Enter MITRE DETECT. So I'm gonna talk through this briefly. I'll walk through how to install it, and then I'll give you just kind of a brief walkthrough, of, uh, kind of a demo of how to use this tool. So here we go. So MITRE DETECT, and the link will be below the video here, is a tool found out on GitHub that is used to map out data sources, threats, and detection capabilities. Specifically, you can find an online version of the editor at this link. We're gonna run this, but on an install we have ourselves. Or you can kind of walk through this getting started page, which kind of lists some of the use cases here. Now, obviously it's how to run it as well. I'm just gonna scroll down here and you can see like, here it's outputting data source mappings to an Excel sheet, if you like dealing with Excel. This is kind of more of the use case I'm going to go through here, where we're going to map out data source visibility and coverage, but then do so in a way that I can load it through MITRE Navigator and see, given the enterprise attack matrix, what my coverage is or would be given the data sources you selected. Very powerful. And then one thing kind of cool down at the bottom I'm going to show is right here. I can also run it to output all the data source mappings or the data sources there are mappings for within the tool by how often they show up on the MITRE ATT&CK matrix. So you can see here a process monitoring at 290 count has the highest occurrence. So this is, if you think about it, it's almost like saying what data source would give me the most coverage according to the MITRE ATT&CK enterprise? And based on this, it would be process monitoring. And from my experience, there's a lot of things you can catch with process monitoring. It doesn't mean though, if I look at the reverse of this, that things like name pipes aren't important because they only occur once. I see name piped privilege escalation a lot. So the goal is not to map out every single matrix in the matrix enterprise. Like the goal shouldn't be get all of these, but there should be some key ones maybe you want to get. And again, if you don't know where you fit on the attack matrix, this will help solve that problem for you. So let's start by just pulling this down and getting it installed. So for this, I'm just going to pull a copy of the actual GitHub. So I'm going to click here, copy the link. And I've got on my Windows box, Windows subsystem for Linux. I've got, so basically I have Ubuntu on Windows. You could also do this on any Linux operating system. Or if you have Python, on your Windows host, you could also do what I'm about to do directly on Windows. So first things first, I'm going to clone down the repository. There we go, this will go pretty quick. This next part's gonna take a little bit of time just because of the way I'm going to do it. <laughs> it's, it's just based on my preference. So what we're gonna do once this is done is we're gonna CD into the folder and I'm gonna have to install the Python requirements. There's multiple ways of doing this. So they have a requirements.txt file. So technically you could do pip install or you could do app get or yum install and install these Python modules. I tend to use Python a decent amount, so I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna do this instead and I'll talk through this. I'm doing pip environment install, 
which what this is doing is it's creating a folder in my operating system that will have a custom Python environment installed with the modules necessary for what's in this folder. So it allows me to have various Python projects where if they have different dependencies or versions of modules, I don't have co conflicts. So again, you could have done a, a pip install each of these like attack CTI, simple JSON, Plotly, Pandas. Uh, you could just app or yum install them directly into your operating system. Uh, I, I tend to like to do pip environments, although you can clearly tell it takes a little bit longer <laughs> because it's basically getting a copy of Python plus then installing the module. So this will take just a second. And then once it's installed, I'm going to run the web editor where we can manually map out our data sources. And then we'll do things like convert the output of that, which is a YAML file, to JSON so that we can use it in Miter Navigator. So hold on a sec, we'll give this just a second to complete. All right. From here, I'm going to go ahead and enter my Python environment, which it tells you the command right here. It's pip environment shell. And so now when I run Python, that will be the version of Python that got installed into the, the pip environment, which in this case is Python 3.8.5. So if I do Python detect and I run it, it should work where had I have just ran it directly after pulling the git down, it would have failed saying I'm missing some modules. So the Python environment took care of that for me or using requirements.txt. So in here we can see the tool ran and I'm now gonna enter the editor. You can run this in the background. I'm just gonna run it directly and it's gonna start up a web service. I can go ahead and click on this. There we go, I, I accidentally clicked on it, which is where I wanted to go anyway. And this is the web interface for mapping out your data sources. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on data sources. I'm going to go and create a new file. And what we're going to do is we're just going to act like a mock organization and build out some data sources we think we're collecting currently. So I'm going to click add data source. And you might not have the full list, which again, though, this is this command. Uh, I'm going to open. Oh, I actually got to stop this for a second because I didn't run it in the background. And if I run this command, this is that one that I showed in the getting starting page that will list out all the data sources according to how many times they show up in MITRE ATT&CK. And so if you don't know the full list, this will give you the full list anyway, but you don't technically have to do that. What you could do, and I've got, it looks like it's still running in the background, which is fine. Make sure this is up and running. Nope, let's try that again. There we go. All right. So refresh, go back to data sources. What you can do if you don't want to have that output already, you can go to add data sources and you can just type something. As soon as I type W, I'm doing Windows. I can see like the default Windows event logs. Oh, okay. Yeah, we probably collect this. All right. You can put the date that you started to receive that. This is just more for your record keeping anyway. Go ahead and select. And then the bigger question is, are you using it within a tool for analytics, like a SIM? For me, I only really map these out if I'm already doing that, or I'm trying to do a possible, how much would this change my visibility if I added this? So I'm gonna go ahead and say yes and yes. Where am I getting Windows event logs? What product? Well, I'm collecting it just natively with Windows. So I'm gonna, this is just whatever tool name you wanna give it. I'll add that. Let's add another one. I'm going to say we're doing uh, process monitoring. Notice process monitoring is not the same thing as process command line. So if I was doing sysmon or EDR, I would add both. If I was using the built-in Windows process monitoring, but I forgot to enable the group policy for command line, I would just do process monitoring. So you're going to map out what you actually have. I'll say process monitoring. Again, I'm going to select the same dates. Oh, there we go. Yes, yes. I'll say I'm getting this from Sysmon as an example. And by the way, I'm skipping this section down here. This is a qualitative assessment on how well you handle that data source. Uh, again, more for your record keeping, so I'm just ignoring that for right now. In production, I think it's helpful and I would recommend it, but not one of the points I'm trying to cover in this video. So we'll add Sysmon. We also have process command line, uh, same dates. 
Yes, yes. That was also from Sysmon. Technically, if you had Sysmon plus an EDR, I could put something like this game from CrowdStrike. Doesn't really change the context of what I'm demoing here, so I'll add that in. And you would keep going and you would add things like Amazon AWS or uh, Linux systems, DNS, network infrastructure. They're in here. You can map them and add them. But once you have your data sources added, and initially this will be a little time consuming, you're going to save the results. Saving the results to the YAML file lets you go back and edit it without having to redo all the work. But it's also, I need this YAML file so I can convert it to a Navigator JSON file. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop the web service because I'm not adding any more to this. And I'm going to run this command right here. Because what happened is in my downloads folder, it created data sources new.yaml, which is right here. And so I'm running detect, and I'm saying load up that data sources, but convert it into a MITRE Navigator JSON file. Go ahead and run that. Now notice it did say there's some warnings. If you added dash health, it would tell you what they are. And all it's saying is I have some data sources I didn't say anything about. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And so from here, I'm going to flip over to MITRE Attack Navigator. And link will be in the, the video. And I'm going to open an existing layer that I have on my local machine. So on my machine, since I'm using WSL, it drops me into my home folder under detect because I get clone detect. And then the output file, the folder is normally empty. But when I just did the conversion, it saved it as an output. So I'm going to go ahead and load this up. And now all of a sudden, here it goes. This is my MITRE ATT&CK enterprise mapping based on those three data sources I just added. Now wait, that looks well, actually looks pretty good. It looks like we're doing fairly well. Well, let's, let's just run through one more scenario here. Let me launch the editor again. Again, if you don't want to have the control C out of this, you could have put the ampersand behind it. Uh, I'm just not doing that right now. I'm going to go to data sources, new. This time I'm going to add windows again, the event logs. So like what's built in, select today's date. Yes, yes, and just call it native windows. But I'm not going to do process command line monitoring. Let's assume you have the built in windows application system and security. But you're currently not doing like EDR log collection or Sysmon. Well, let's be clear. Maybe you have EDR, but you're not bringing the data in to do additional checking. So all your sims probably actually getting is alerts from your EDR. That means you don't have process monitoring and command line logs for analytics. You're trusting the vendor and your EDR solution to do it. It's not exactly the same thing. So my argument to the team might be, OK, we have application, we have system, we have security. But we probably need PowerShell. We really need process command line, especially for like case and investigations. But to help justify that argument, watch what happens here. I'm going to go ahead and save this as if I just have the default logging. You probably would add like authentication logs and a few other things in here. Like I can add authentication. Let me change this just a little bit. I don't want to make it look like I'm cheating too much here. Windows, so we have authentication and we have Windows standard event logs. Pretty common for my clients. Save. This is data source two. So now I can stop this and I'm going to convert data source new, but it's going to be two. And yeah, I'm going to have to fight the two. There we go. A little weird syntax because of the space, but there we go. I'll go ahead and let it run health. It won't change anything here. You notice here, all it's saying is, hey, you didn't, you don't have these data sources. That's fine. But now when I go back to Navigator, I'm going to add a new tab, open existing. Here we go. This is my second example, what I just built. Hmm. Look at the coverage difference. And if I want to, you can actually compare these. Select annotated. Give them a score value of 1. Is just a simple check that I usually do. Select annotated again. Set a scoring value of I don't know, one. There we go. And then what I can do is I can now compare these two layers. 
So this will be enterprise and it's a and not B is what I'm going to do here. So these are things that are covered in one but not the other. The coloring can be kind of misleading, but just make sure you know which ones you're comparing versus the other. So here on the left one, we have command line and scripting. On the right, see how the color is different? It's because we have to go into the sub techniques. So, but this helps me start to do comparisons, but the most important is just getting these two examples in the first place. So now I can go to a meeting or a change control board and be like, why do we need Sysmon? Or why do I actually need the process logs from EDR? Right here. <laughs> so MITRE Detect, it's a fairly easy tool to use. And I only really covered like one main use case. There's multiple things you can do with it, like helping with threat modeling and other things. So check it out. If you want to learn how to map out your data source visibility, as well as maybe a few other things, check out MITRE Detect.